Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a very cool ribbon microphone. That microphone is the Bayer Dynamic M160 Double Ribbon Microphone, and if you are interested in this mic, it will cost you around $700. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at 100%. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo or the lower third to see how much I did boost it. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. It went behind the door. First off, you will get a zippered storage bag. You'll of course get the microphone, a microphone clip with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, some documentation including a frequency response graph for your specific microphone, and some darn stickers! Then as far as the build quality, it feels like a standard German piece of engineering, meaning it feels excellent. It has an all-metal body as well as this spherical metal mesh grill, which surprisingly has no give to it. It weighs in at 156 grams. As you move around the microphone, there are no filters. The bottom has an XLR port, and this microphone is still being made in Germany. Then, as far as the specs, the microphone has a hypercardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 Hz to 18 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 60 dB, and an impedance of 200 ohms. Now, I am rotating the M160 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone, going back to 180 degrees. There should be another lobe of sensitivity right here. You can hear a few plosives. Then I will go to the second 90 degree angle. Here's how it sounds. And then I will rotate and end at the front of the mic. It's a lot of bass. Here I would normally do a very aggressive plosive tests, but ribbons aren't the best at rejecting those and you can actually damage them. So you can hear if I just breathe ever so slightly into it, it is it's bad. So if you're getting this for vocals, use a pop filter. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. And if I could make a guess, I am vibrating the heck out of your subs. Now I'm about three inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. And here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you sad gamers, now I am typing on the Leet W keys. Here's how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here's how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. And in case you're going to be using this at your desk while you're using peripherals, I will go ahead and bump the desk to see how much of that it rejects in the provided microphone clip. And I will bump the boom arm. Big no-no. Do not do that. And just to be as thorough as possible, now I am going to tap the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And now I want to do a very quick comparison between the M160 and a couple of other microphones so you can see how it compares for voice. Of course, we will start on the Bayer Dynamic M160. I am six inches off of this microphone, connected to the 18i20, gain at 100%. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, and here is how the audio sounds. Now I am speaking into the Bayer Dynamic M201TG, which is a $300 dynamic microphone, and it is one of my all-time favorites. But here is how this sounds compared to Bayer Dynamic's ribbon offering. We are back on the Bayer Dynamic M160, same distance, same gain setting. Here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to another one. Now I am about six inches away from the SM7B's capsule. This is a $400 dynamic microphone, one of the most famous broadcast dynamic microphones, 
and I just wanted to include it in this comparison because this is another one of my favorites because of how smooth and warm it is. So here is the SM7B compared against the M160. And just in case you hadn't had enough, we are back on the M160. Here is how this microphone sounds, six inches away, gain at 100%. Let's jump to the next one so you can hear how this mic compares against the next mic. And to wrap it up, just so we have another comparison to a ribbon microphone, now I am speaking into the AEA KU5A, which is a $1,100 ribbon microphone, and this is an active ribbon microphone, so it takes 48 volts phantom power. I did have to decrease my gain to about 3 o'clock on the 18i20, and here is how this microphone sounds in comparison to the Bayer Dynamic M160. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones did you like the best. No filters were added to any of them. They were all raw, just as they come right out of the box without engaging any of the switches on them. I've got a ribbon mic that I want to test for you guys today I believe it's made in Germany And I think that's really neat I know, it's lame to say neat But I do think it's kinda neat It's neato, kiddos! I'm gonna go It is official I am a ribbon microphone convert to sound like Brick Tamlin, <laughs> I love ribbon. I love ribbon. And first up in terms of pros, the M160 has a surprising amount of detail to it, especially for a ribbon. The sound characteristic of this microphone is also incredibly smooth. The proximity effect on this thing has so much weight to it that I think it might actually begin to create a black hole. And it's made in Germany. I always love seeing that. And then in terms of cons, due to this being a passive ribbon microphone, it is insanely quiet. So either you will need an incredible preamp or you will need something like a FET head or a cloud lifter or something like that. Also, if you're mounting this in a location with a lot of vibration, you will need to buy a shock mount. And if you're using it for vocals, you 100% need a pop filter. So what are my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone? On the electric guitar, I did really enjoy it. I thought there was a little bit too much low end, but a high pass filter can clean that right up. The top end was still very present and aggressive. All the while, it was maintaining this incredibly smooth and pleasing sound though. I did really enjoy it with a little bit of EQ. Then on the acoustic guitar, when I was playing a little bit more aggressively, I wasn't too keen on it. I thought the low end got to be a little bit uncontrolled. You could fix that with a little bit of EQ, but where this microphone really shined was when I was doing more gentle playing. The low end has this amazing and intimate warmth to it. The top end still had this beautiful shimmer to it. The thing that really stood out to me though was the softness of the attack of the guitar pick. I thought it was incredible for more gentle, more intimate, maybe solo guitar performances. I loved it. Then for singing, I did find it to be a little bit boxy around 200 hertz, so some EQ could fix that up and make it sound a little bit more controlled and a little bit more natural. The mids and highs were smooth and nothing popped out as unnatural or sharp or painful. All in all, a very usable and manageable microphone for singing if you have to use it for that. And lastly, for spoken word, I think the sweet spot on this microphone is from four to six inches. And at that point, it just sounds incredible to my ears. I know it is not a vocal microphone, but I love it. 
For a higher pitched voice like mine, it provides this authoritative low end. The mids were not overly nasally, especially when we compared it to the SM7B. And the top end of this microphone is absolutely bonkers for a ribbon. Ribbons typically roll off everything above 7 to 10K, but this captures every consonant, all the t t t. You capture all that information, all the attack of your spoken word without losing anything, without it sounding sharp, without it sounding overboosted. I may be a weirdo, but I really enjoyed it for spoken word. To wrap up, would I recommend the Bayer Dynamic M160 double ribbon microphone? Oh my gosh, double ribbon! It's a double ribbon! Yes, I would. I absolutely would. I thought this microphone worked really well for music on the electric, the acoustic, and for singing, especially if you're able to throw on some EQ and make some minor tweaks to it. And then for spoken word, if you have a super bassy voice, the low end may be a little bit too much for you, but if you have a higher pitched voice like mine and you're looking to dabble in ribbon microphones and get that warm sound, that incredibly smooth sound, while simultaneously getting an articulate sound, then absolutely I would recommend it. But now I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Of all of the microphones that I compared the M160 to, which one was your favorite? The M160, the 7B, the 201TG, or the AEA KU5A? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, subscribe, logo down beneath me, and don't forget to hit that bell icon. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Please stay safe. I'll talk to you later.